Hey everyone, I want to do this video uh, just to kind of address something that was pretty troublesome to me. And uh, I've got a couple of friends that are going to be coming on uh, during this time to share their point of view and um, and to help minister to us, uh, all that will be, they'll be watching it. Uh, so we're going to be talking to Zachary Conover. He works with End Abortion now. He is their communications director. And we're also going to be talking to Jeremy McNeil. He is the senior pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Bucyrus, Ohio. So first of all, I'm wearing my Abortion is Murder uh, shirt, courtesy of Wrath and Grace. Check them out, wrathandgrace.com. Uh, we are, as Christians, in this fight together. So... Um, Abortion is murder, and it is horrendous to know that uh, that babies are being, you know, just torn apart. Okay, so the reason I'm really mainly doing this is as a reaction for the new legislation in New York for late-term abortions up to birth. It's uh, insane. Uh, but I want to first call uh, Zachary and uh, talk to him about uh about the new legislation and kind of what end abortion now uh what where their stand is uh so uh bear with me as i get him on the phone and we'll uh we'll talk it over so uh here here he is now And I'm using my Blue Yeti mic, so maybe this will pick up a little bit better. Hello? Hey, Zachary. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing good, brother. How are you? I'm well. I was just introducing you. Uh, this is Zachary Conover uh, for uh, End Abortion Now. He's a communications director. Uh, I was wanting to talk to you about the uh, late-term abortion uh, legislation uh, that has just passed in New York. And and just kind of give me a end abortion now um, synopsis, uh, what your ministry is about, and and uh, where the take yeah. is. And so, one thing I'm obviously very encouraged about, I know we are, is um, just how much is being talked about. You know, I'm seeing it all up and down my feed. I mean, everywhere you look, Christians, people are really starting to have this conversation, which is encouraging in one way. But on the flip side of things, it's a little bit saddening that this is what it's taken yeah. to get to get to this point. I mean, we have to... Now there's some kind of line that's been crossed in the minds of Christians where now we need to start having this conversation and now we need to start really looking into doing something. So I think that's a testament to... I mean, our enemies in this are working incredibly hard and tirelessly to push child sacrifice um, yes. into the into the public square, and you know they've been successful. And the other side of it is our pro life movement. Unfortunately, when we can see something like this as being having the lot the line drawn, like we've gone too far, that's a that's a sign of our failure in terms of our our methodology. Because a child in the womb at conception is just as valuable. Absolutely. Um, as a child at nine months about ready to come out of its mother. So um, that's not to say that this isn't um, strikingly evil, that it makes me sick to my stomach and all of us, of course, um, you know, when you think about a child being, I mean, fully developed for goodness sake before they come out of their mother's womb. So there is that aspect, but you know, part of it is, um, you know, man, this is the conversation that we've been having for a long time, trying to sound the alarm for Christians to wake up and engage this issue from a biblical um, foundation with the gospel at the center. And that's what End Abortion Now is all about, is bringing the good news of Jesus Christ into conflict with abortion. So that's Amen. why we go to the abortion mills and do ministry. That's why we try as hard as we can to push against the narrative that's been promulgated in the culture on and on social media um you know about abortion being health care and all this other stuff we tell mm -hmm. the truth about abortion and then of course we ultimately want to impact the legislature that will you know 
provide righteous laws to protect these fatherless children. So our initial reaction is, of course, disgust along with uh, every everyone else, but never losing the hope that's in Christ and the power of his gospel to end this. Amen. Well, the the uh, heartbeat bill that was the the bill 258, I believe, um, which is uh-huh. Purdue, um, which was actually introduced, which would uh, ban abortions after the heartbeat had been present. Do you think this passing of this legislation in New York was almost like retaliation for the considering of the heartbeat bill? I'm sure that that's how the pro-choice advocates um, would would try to make it seem. Or, I mean, of course, anything they do is retaliatory in terms <laughs> yeah. of, of preserving life in yeah. the womb because they have their eyes on the prize, and that's something that Christians have to set their eyes on. You know, we need to not concern ourselves with uh, with a cutoff here and there. We need to assert the absolute value and dignity of these children from the moment of conception. And so while I appreciate the sentiment of, of a heartbeat bill, I think um, it's, it's not consistent ultimately with what righteous legislation would be. Um, and, you know, in terms of a, a living human being, God's word is very clear. Um, you know, science, biology, all those things are behind us in terms of that. But as far as retaliation, man, um, of, of course, I would yeah. say, I would, I would say <laughs> they would, they would, uh, probably be along the lines of, well, um, trying to paint us as pro-lifers into a corner and say, well, you know, they want this. And so we're just going to go all the way on the other side yeah. of things. And, and that's, that's what's happened. So they're, but the important thing to, to point out is, uh, they're not dealing in half measures and, and compromises like we are. They know what they want. They know what they're fighting for. They want the right to murder children. And so they are legislating to that end. Yeah, the the idol of of uh, human autonomy is ever present, and uh, thank you for talking with us. Uh, really, where where are we at right now as far as uh, what end abortion now? Uh, what your moves are in response to this? Just to continue doing what you're doing, or would you be? I mean, the heartbeat bill is a step. I know that it's not where we want to be, uh, but. It, would you support the heartbeat bill or, or would that kind of, would it be an all or nothing support uh, from end abortion now? Well, yeah, in terms of what we would support, we would want um, ideally what would be called a bill of total abolition, right? Where Absolutely. It, it's, it's outlawed. It's, it's done away with completely. And of, that's of course what we believe to be consistent with how God sees this. Um, are we are we grateful for the effort? Yes, um, but ultimately, and I think it would behoove us to examine uh, these types of bills further. And if we had more time, maybe we could get into it. But um, there are um, circumstances surrounding bills like this that are hard, hard to get behind in terms of being uh, from a consistent perspective, True. and then bringing harmony and justice in terms of the victim of the child. So. I would, I would probably speak for an abortion now um, and say I, I, I'm grateful, I, I'm thankful for any lives that are saved from legislation where people who genuinely care, are, who are trying to protect life, who are trying to, to rescue those being led away to the slaughter, I genuinely sympathize with that. But Christians really have to examine themselves and our methodology as far as our legislation goes and is it consistent with what we say about abortion. Is it murder? Should it be treated as such? And, and if the answer is yes, then we have to legislate to that end. So in terms of what's next for end abortion now, uh, we want to make more noise surrounding this. Of course, we want to continue to come against the culture. We want to continue to build up and equip local churches, which is what end abortion now is all about. So we want to continue doing mill work. But this year, primarily in our mission is focused on speaking into the local legislatures. So we need churches, we need Christians within their local churches, not just to be going to the mills, but we also need them to to speak prophetically to their magistrates and and those in authority and demand that they obey Jesus and protect these children. So by God's grace, brother, that's what our focus is going to be on top of equipping churches to start their own media ministries so that they can war against this in this way as well. And I'm sure you saw uh, what was going on in New York with our brother, John Speed, Mm -hmm. and um, babies are murdered here, and that was a faithful, bold move. 
um, that was just something as simple as hanging a sign in the door to get people's attention that there yeah. are the righteous, even in a land like this, the righteous do exist. So right. continue to fight. Well, thank you so much, Zachary. I appreciate your time and I know you got to run. Uh, we're going to get Jeremy on the line next, but thank you so much for your uh, time and um, just giving us a piece of your heart. Uh, we know that it's a, it's a uh, close felt battle for you. And uh, we we thank you so much for your time. So yeah, yeah, ple- ple- pleasure being on, brother. Thanks I want to so I want to talk to you again later, uh, maybe more in depth when we have more time, uh, just about uh, the future and uh, what bills and, and and what ways as far as getting in in touch with our legislation, our legislative body uh, for making this happen as a collective body of Christ. Uh, but thank you again, and I will talk to you next time, my friend. Sure, man. Thank you so much. Have a good evening, okay? You too, brother. All right. Bye. All right. So we, that was great from Zach. And I want to talk to uh, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, again, Jeremy McNeil is a is a great friend of mine. And uh, he is, hang on, I'll just introduce him when he answers the phone. If he answers the phone. Hello? Hey, Jeremy. How you doing, buddy? I'm fine. How are you, bro? I'm, I'm great. I'm just introducing you again. This is Jeremy McNeil. He is the uh, senior pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Bucyrus, Ohio. And, That's right. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of get your response to the uh, recent legislation in New York and just kind of get an idea of how you how do you pastor in this this world like this, I mean, when, when something like this, this crazy happens, uh, what, what do you do as a pastor? You know, that's the, the pastoral ministry is one of those things that, uh, you're called to be both gentle and firm at the same time. Um, and, you know, recognizing that there may be women out there who are terrified of their unplanned pregnancies and don't know any other options and have been told, uh, by their education systems and by their governments, and that the best and cheapest option is just to uh, kill their child. Um, of course, they would say abort the fetus. But um, and so, it, as, as a pastor, obviously we have to look at this, and uh, it's heartbreaking. And I think that's that's the kind of the first reality that 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 then when I saw it was disgust and heartache. Um, that these these image bearers of God are are suffering needlessly because uh, as much as they want to tell you that they don't feel and that they can't experience these things, they absolutely do. Um, and and it's hard uh, because you know there, there's a reason Christians uh, should be studiers of history. Uh, it's because if you don't, you're doomed to repeat it. And the the most progressive culture of the, the ancient times, Rome, had a very similar practice yes. where um, unwanted children were discarded on the trash heaps. Uh, or if they had enough money, they could have a forced induction early on, and which often resulted in both the mother and the child's death anyway. Um, but it was the Christians who were the ones who would go pull these children off the trash heaps um, and adopt them and bring them into their homes. Um, and so I think my, my reaction to this is it's there, as with any corrupt power, they're playing tug of war with the most vulnerable. Yeah. Um, that that's the easiest people to to use in your power play, um, and and so you know why not go for the ones who can't speak for themselves and put the name of uh, women's rights on it um, in order to to boost your voter base or whatever it is, um, and so it's it's disgusting to see innocent lives being used in order to. Uh, ploy for more power i'll tell you i Uh, was i was completely sick in my stomach completely when i when i read this news i was i was troubled and and there's not much that shocks me 
Because, okay, so as of late, it had seemed like the conservative uh, evangelicals, conservative politicians had made some inroads with Bill 258, the heartbeat bill. Uh And I had high hopes. I know that that's not, and and I talked with Zachary Conover, that's not really the objective for the Christian. We want complete abolition uh, for, for the infant, but... If it saves some lives, we're making some ground with the heartbeat bill. And and most recently, the new governor of your state of Ohio had uh-huh. has just uh, said he would he would affirm and vote yes to a heartbeat bill, which is is that's great. That's new news. And um, uh-huh. so I wonder, and I asked Zachary the same thing. Do you think that this bill? being passed in New York was almost retaliatory legislation for the heartbeat bill? Oh, there's no doubt. Uh, well, it, they were obviously making a statement. Again, it was a political move. Um, because I'm sure, as, as you're talking to Zach, there, there has never been a medically necessary... There's not much that shocks me. Because, mm-hmm. okay, so as of late, it had seemed like the conservative uh, evangelicals, conservative polit- politicians had made some inroads with Bill 258, the heartbeat bill. Uh-huh. And I had exactly. high hopes. I know that that's not, and, and I talked with Zachary Conover, that's not really the objective for the Christian. We want complete abolition uh, for right. for the infant. But if it saves some lives, we're making some ground with the heartbeat bill. And and most recently, the new governor of your state of Ohio had uh-huh. has just uh, said he would he would affirm and vote yes to a heartbeat bill, which is is that's great. That's new news. And um, uh-huh. so I wonder, and I asked Zachary the same thing. Do you think that this bill being passed in New York was almost retaliatory legislation? for the heartbeat bill oh well, there's no doubt um uh, well it they were obviously making a statement again it was a political move um because i'm sure as, as you're talking to zach there there has never been a medically necessary instance in which a late-term abortion is necessary in order to save the life of the mother um they can do a c-section and or they can induce labor um, and I, I have a friend who is an elder at a church in Alabama, uh, and he is a pediatric pulmonologist, and he has kept a premature baby born at 23 weeks alive. Yes. Um, and so, you know, there and there's and there are numerous, countless interviews with the doctors out there saying that there there is no medical reason for a late-term abortion. So in other words, this is this is insanity. (laughs) This is what this is. This is complete insanity. Uh, at in previous times you had some sort of, of, um, let's, let's call it ethical position for abortion. Okay. For rape and, uh, you know, even the arguable, but never proven life of the mother at risk situations, uh, mm-hmm. There are there there was there was some sort of ethical position that the pro choice would take, and now exactly. with this legislation, it is completely, completely bonkers. Like yeah, this and, and is so, absurd. Yeah, yeah, that's what's so terrifying about it because they, they say the health of the mother. Roe v. Wade did not define what health of the mother was, but there was a later court decision that did, and it's not just physical health. Uh, psychological health, economic health, social health can all be factored into a woman deciding to have a late-term abortion. So the woman's life does not even have to be at stake. She could just re- decide, you know, eight months and three weeks into the pregnancy, oh, I don't have enough money to raise this child, uh, so let's have an abortion. Yeah. Um, and and that is the, the, the it's barbaric. Okay. And, 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 it, and it is. It is astonishing to me that a so-called group of progressive people would be hearkening back to the practices of ancient barbarians mm. and, and calling it um, a, a modern way of thinking. Yeah, and so, it's not, this is not new. This so is old. An, an evangelical could not support this. I mean, I understand where some progressives, 
that would call themselves Christian and not saying they're not because there are a lot of confused right. people. Okay, so there might be Democrats. I'm I'm libertarian. I'm neither Democrat or Republican. So let's just clear that up. Right. Um, but I would say that there was there was always a faction of the Democratic Party that that could say we support choice because of these ethical positions. They cannot do that now. There is no possible way that they could yep. say we support this bill in any ethical, any any way that would resemble a Christian ethic. There's no possible way. No, and I think that's where why we need to make sure that our focus is in this is through a biblical and scriptural worldview and not through a political one. Because, you know, you would think that the number of, of self-proclaimed conservatives who are pro-life would be really, really high. Yeah, but it's really only about fifty-five percent of Republicans identify as pro-life, and that's absurd. Uh, only twenty percent of Democrats or progressives would say that they are pro-life. Um, but o- over seventy-five percent of evangelical Christians say they're pro-life, uh, and so clearly, a, a Christian ethic and a Christian worldview should be our primary discerning factor. In, any of these situations, and I think that's one of the main dangers um, in our American uh, religious situation is that uh, more often than not, our faith is influenced by politics instead of our politics influenced by our faith. Absolutely. Um, and and so if we allow uh, the powers that be to dictate what it means to be a faithful Christian and not scripture, then you get into all kinds of crazy nonsense, mm-hmm. uh, including – the viability of a, of a, of a human um, before it's born being a determining factor, of whether or not it should have a chance to live. Um, and, and you also consider the fact that, you know, in, in most places an abortion costs 800 bucks. Yeah, I know it. Uh, <laughs> and nuts. adoption costs thousands and thousands mm-hmm. and thousands the, of dollars. The cost like, well, of adoptions is why absurd. Right. Right. Why don't these Christians just adopt them? Mm-hmm. Well, if, if adoptions were the same price as abortion, an abortion was the price of an adoption. You probably see a lot less abortion and a lot more adoption. Absolutely. Uh, but this is an intentional system put into place in order to make readily accessible the murder of children and make it difficult for families to adopt them. Yep. Um, and this should be troubling to all of us. Uh, it does not matter what side of the aisle you're on. And I've, I've actually talked to many of my friends who are, who are Democratic, uh, and they are deeply disturbed by oh, what happened. I couldn't imagine. Work. Yeah. All right. So I've got, all right, I've got like three minutes sure. worth of memory on to, to make this video. So I want to know from a pastor's perspective, you have a girl that are a family, a couple that that they're not ready to be parents. Uh, is the advice simple? You know, I mean, what what do you say? How do you counsel them? Give me give me about give me two minutes on that, <laughs> if you can. Two minutes. Um, I mean, I would begin by stating that no one is ever ready to be a parent. Absolutely. Um, my wife and I found out we were pregnant with our first son after three months of marriage while we were living in someone else's basement. Um, we because we couldn't even afford our own apartment. Um. No one's ever ready. And I, I, I promise you that I would never change that for a second. Um, but then it's this understanding of that child in your womb. You, you are, you are missing out on one of the greatest gifts. God gives humanity. It is right to be scared. It is good to be scared because that, feeling of inadequacy is what actually should make you rely upon God to parent that child in the fear Amen. and admonition of the Lord. Amen. I was uh, just about to ask the, the feeling of not being ready or not being equipped. That's like every day for me. That's, that's like my daily life as a parent, as a Christian, uh, that forces me to repent. That forces me to, to uh-huh. seek help. That is yep. the normative position for a Christian. So yep. uh, that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I, no, that's absolutely fine, brother. Um, but then also saying the idea that you know the, the the promise for Christian parents is that the church is there 
to support and and uphold them uh, and, and covenant faithfulness to that child. Um, and so if, if you feel alone, you shouldn't be. Uh, if you feel scared, you should go to those that you are worshiping with. Um, and and the, and here's the important thing: is the church needs to be the place where single moms who have an unexpected pregnancy are safe to come and be loved and well cared for. Oh yes, most the most welcoming place should be the church. That and that's, that's right. not been the case historically over the last you know hundred years. Uh, but we've got to write the sh- we've got to write the ship. I mean that's yeah. and it starts with pastors, with elders, right. with laymen, really. Really opening their arms and and like mm-hmm. uh, like Zachary does, uh, like ministering at the abortion clinics and really giving them a place to come and. T- All right, so I have. <laughs> sorry about that, Jeremy. Uh, That's fine. I ran out of storage. Had to delete some stuff. We're back. Uh, Jeremy was talking about ministering to uh, a person in his congregation. He was saying yeah. that he would guide them back to. Uh, the church, just like, and I was saying, Zachary, uh, ministers to young women and families, uh, every day at the abortion mills and mm-hmm. wants to invite them in. We need to be welcoming. We need to say, Hey, I would love for you to be a part of our, the body and uh, right. learn about Christ instead of, you know, you know, condemning and, uh, but part of proclaiming the gospel is the community is is That's who right. we are. So, um, any yeah, I mean, any any follow anything you want to talk about here, Jeremy? Uh, yeah, I mean, follow up? just just as a, a short follow up on that. I mean, I just don't think there's any doubt that over the past seventy years, the church has shot itself in the foot <laughs> yeah. um, in this situation uh, to where our theological knowledge does not meet our um, gracious ethic and you know the two things have to be true what we know has to be true and how we communicate it the way we communicate it also has to be true um, so while we need to communicate the truth that abortion is evil and that it is murder we're also supposed to speak the truth in love um, and that is a hard balance and not everyone will hear it well um, but you know we we have abdicated abdicated as it as the church our social responsibility, um, and we've given it over to people who play tug of war with the least of these. Um, and because and 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 a lot of uh, and a main part of it is that we've abandoned the, the gospel. Absolutely. Um, and when you abandon the gospel, when you abandon the reality that we are wretched. And that we and our hearts are outside of the saving work of Christ are in utter rebellion against our creator. And that only by his saving grace do we have any hope for forgiveness and for knowledge of God and for a life of godliness. Until we understand that truth, we cannot humbly accept other sinners into our midst. Absolutely, uh, yes. Um, and and when, so when you abandon that aspect of the gospel, you know, you can't get the good news of Jesus loves you and saves you until you have the bad news of you're a wretched, depraved sinner. Um, and so, and but it is it is that worldview that gives us the ethic to love other sinners well. Absolutely, absolutely, brother. Thank you so much for your time, absolutely. Jeremy. I love you, brother. Uh, I love Jer- you too, man. Jeremy also helps admin. Uh, the Everything Bibles Facebook group with me. Uh, this is, there's the the uh, group, if you can see, if it focuses, that's the group right there. But Jeremy and I, we have a mutual love for God's word and a mutual friendship that's that's been going on a couple of years now. Yep. And uh, we love each other. Thank you so much, brother. And I really right, appreciate you, your your point of view and your input in this conversation, man. And, and, and much love to you and your congregation. And uh, if I can ever do anything for you, let me know. All right, brother. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, buddy. Bye. Bye. All right. So that was uh, Jeremy McNeil. He, again, he's the senior pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Bucyrus, Ohio. And thank you again to him. And thank you again to Zachary Conover, the communications director with End Abortion Now. Uh, You can check out End Abortion Now. 
uh, via their website, which is www.endabortionnow, all one word, com. And uh, also, what are your what are your point of view? I know Jeremy and I talked about the the Christian, even progressive Christians, uh, used to have some sort of ethical standpoint for you know, well, it's a, it's a rape, or it's a you know, it's before the heart started, or, or you know, there there are several point of views, but this New York legislation where they passed where you could have a late term abortion up to the point of birth that there has got to be no ethical standpoint. You know, th- there's got to be no ethical ground there that you could say would have any, any, uh, any Christian could take no Christian person could say that they're Christian and say that there is any kind of ethical position there. So uh, let me know in the comment section, what you thought I'm going to try to piece these videos together. So I have like uh, three videos. This interview made up like three videos. So uh, I hope that y'all don't mind the, uh, uh, the choppiness. So please take it easy on me in the comments. Also subscribe uh, and, uh, and let me know what you think. I think it's going to be over here. Subscribe. And uh, anyway, uh, let me know if there's anything I could do different, but I'm sure that there'll be plenty of folks that don't like this video. Uh, anyway, thanks guys for watching. God bless.